how did you get involved with musical theater and performing and when did you know you wanted to do it professionally? Mm, I think that my answers to these questions change often um, <laughs> uh, because I think, you know, I've, I've, I grew up dancing and um, that's always been a love of mine. Uh, I think that's kind of how I got involved in theater was through dance. Um, so when I was in middle school, uh, they were doing Pirates of Penzance. And in sixth grade, um, a lot of my friends were joining that production or auditioning for it. And, um, you know, I thought, well, they need more tapping cops <laughs> in Pirates of Penzance. So I went and auditioned and I got it and got to tap my little heart out in the back. And I had the best time. Um, it was the first time I was a part of, you know, storytelling in that way. The storytelling I was doing lasted maybe a total of the three and a half minutes of a dance, which is also very important, but it was just this new element that I was curious about and excited about. Also my sister really, uh, she introduced me to musicals at like at home, we would listen to them and um, sing along to Annie and Rent and, um, and all these like, you know, epic musicals and, um, so she also loves it and loved it, but she ended up going into um, speech pathology. So I kept following that path and really loved it and uh, just kept being a part of the show choirs and um, the choir at school and kept dancing. And I was also playing sports. So I played soccer and basketball, but those started to dwindle. I kept being a part of um, show choir and all the theater groups and um I kept auditioning for the shows at the school and um, I, I just kept doing it. So I think it, it started around middle school when um, they need more tapping cops and Pirates of Penzance. <laughs> I know you went on to go to Carnegie Mellon. Mm -hmm. And um, what was your experience there and how did it prepare you for your career in professionally in theater? Uh, it was everything. I'm so grateful for my training there um, at Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, I think, you know, college in general, you know this now, you're 22 and you've been through college. Um, I think it's such a growing time, no matter what you choose to do, uh, especially if you go to college away from home. Um, for me, it was, I was out of state and learning who I am as a person by myself and also who I am as an artist and what I love about Carnegie Mellon is that they don't try to fit you into this cookie cutter version of what a musical theater person should be quote unquote um, for me I felt like they really tried to point you in the direction of you whatever that is if there's silliness if there's this um, quirk that you have like maybe emphasize that um, if you play a, a strange, if you play the bagpipes, like, let's see how we can use that. Um, just whatever it is, it's really you. They didn't want you to deny who you are, um, just to fit into this mold. And I really, really appreciated that. And I think that I met the most interesting people in my class. We were all just really, really different and, uh, just interesting people. I think that's what I noticed about Carnegie is that they, they wanted interesting humans. Um, and I think that's what we love to see on stage is really just really interesting people that are just totally who they are, you know, whatever that is. Um, but yeah, it was challenging and it also felt like a safe space. Uh, they don't do the cut system. They used to many, many, many years ago, which I don't know if you've heard of what that is, but um, they like accept a bunch of people. And then as the years go on, they cut people um cut certain artists because they weren't making it or weren't you know I don't know who knows I'm just glad I didn't have to deal with that uh, so it felt like a safe space but also tough at the same time fast forward you made your Broadway debut in Newsies and you're mm -hmm. also a part of it in Paper Mill so what was it like being able to be a part of a show from its pre-Broadway stages and seeing all the changes throughout the show mm, that, that's the most rewarding process uh, luckily I just come from doing, I did Little House on the Prairie, the musical, which was a brand new musical at the time. Um, so I knew what that process was like. 
And then also before that, I was doing um, Lone Star Love, which was another new musical. Uh, so I was really lucky to get to go through that process a few times before Newsies. And I think it helped me um, for that like blockbuster, huge musical. Uh, so I think it, it's just, it's what's neat is that the creative team is really um, using whatever you're bringing to the stage, whatever you're bringing to the table which is both daunting and um, incredible and uh, rewarding and everything I want. Um, but it's what's neat is that there would be certain things during Newsies that I would do, at, like little things. And Harvey Firestein was like, keep that. And I was like, wait, really? Because I would kind of commit to it, but then kind of not. Um, but it was, what was neat is that they really gave you permission to go for it. I gave you permission to really try things and you know this was the this was the time to create so let's all do it together um and I think that it's just such a special special thing and I've done a lot of replacing as well where which is you know I, I it was beautiful it was already the show is already frozen quote unquote which means the script and everything the staging is as is somebody that team created it um and went through all the preview process and everything to make it what it is everywhere. Um, so when I join that, it's it's really me plugging in uh, to whatever whatever's been created. And it's cool though because I had been a creator to know that like Anika um, Anika Larson had done that. You know, she had created these steps. She had created you know maybe this little line that just came up when they were running the show. Um, so that's really neat. It's like an appreciation for other artists that go through that process. And then I feel so lucky when I get to go to other productions of Newsies and I'm like, they're doing what we created, like what I had said in the rehearsal room and now it's frozen in the script now. Like what? <laughs> so it's really special. What was your inspiration for behind creating your character? Uh, well, um, when I was auditioning for the role, I was trying to figure out who this was. You know, I was familiar with the movie. Um, and then I, I realized, because we also didn't really get a script, so I didn't understand how she was, you know, a part of this story. Uh, but I knew that she was a reporter at the turn of the century. And there was this complicated relationship with the Newsies, specifically Jack. Um, and she comes from a wealthy family. Um, so I was just, I was Googling, researching what female reporters existed around the turn of the century, not many. Um, we are very fortunate in this day and age. I know we still have a long way to go, but we are fortunate to have lots of female reporters, um, including yourself. <laughs> um, so it, that, but that was unusual back then. How, so it kind of made my job a little bit easy to find somebody that would inspire me. And I really clung to Nellie Bly. She was a, an investigative journalist around the turn of the century. She actually, actually worked for Pulitzer. Um, she, her personality just seemed like who Catherine was. Um, and from the script pages that I did receive, I could tell that she was really um, headstrong, confident, and um, ahead of her time. And that's who Nellie Bly was. And um, she really demanded to be in the spaces where she wasn't allowed. And I mean, literally. So it just seemed exactly like Catherine Plummer. And I just started to study her and became obsessed with Nellie Bly. Uh, and I have some, I have a, actually a game, an old game board um, called Around the World that's based on Nellie Bly. That was one of her, her investigative journalism journeys that she had done. Um, she went around the world in 80 days or something. And that's quite a feat back in the day. And especially as a female, they didn't believe that she would be able to do it. Uh, so I have that board hung up in my, um, my living room framed and hung up. Uh, so she's Nellie Bly and Catherine Plummer are always with me forever because they're just such strong women. And I think that it's really inspiring to me as a female to have that to look up to. Once you went back to film the pro shot for it. Uh, how much rehearsal time did you have to re sort of re remember your character and what was it like filming it? Uh, well, I was doing, 
I was playing the role of Glinda in Wicked at the time. And so going back to Catherine was sort of this rewiring, um, but also like riding a bike. I had played that role for two years. Uh, so it came back quickly. And actually, I think I gained more knowledge having played this new role playing Glinda, who's totally different from Catherine Plummer. Um, but actually, there were little bits of similarities that I, I think were fun to explore. Um, so we, we had only about um, a few weeks before filming the pro shot, but a lot of us had done it before. And it was a mixture of the tour cast and the original Broadway cast. So with working with Jeremy, I had gone through the preview process with him. I had, we opened the show together. So there's this same language that we're speaking. You know, we know it already. It's just a matter of like, oh yeah, that's what it was. Oh, right. And we said this. Oh yeah. So those, there were lots of light bulb moments of, you know, remembering how we did it, uh, which was really, really fun. And then there were some things, some things that I was just like, that's exited my brain. So I'm going to have to relearn this. Um, and there were some things that had been added uh, when they were rehearsing for the first national tour. So they had added a song for Crutchy. They had added a few little blocking details um, and little bits of choreography in certain places. So little tiny changes would throw us in a big way because we're like, wait a second. <laughs> what uh but it, it enhanced the show tremendously so I'm glad that they did that um but yeah it was like riding a bike and also so bizarre at the same time like it's still stored in that in my brain somewhere um and it was neat to bring the things that I had learned in the past couple of years not playing Catherine to the role again and as you mentioned you played Linda starting in 2014 mm. um my personal favorite character that you got to play. I thought that was really a mm. role. Was it like being a part of a show that is loved or the most rewarding part, but being part of a show that is loved around not just the country, but the world? Mm. I'm so lucky. <laughs> I was so lucky to get to do that. Uh, and I knew that also. I mean, I recognize the love around the world. And I think that's the maybe one of the tiny wonderful things about social media is that you see the connection around the world. There's um, people that reach out to you from Japan, from Australia, you know, just literally around the world that say, I love Wicked. I, that's so exciting that you are in the show. Congratulations. You know, I'm like, wow, they know what? Um, and they love the show. And so there's this connection that you feel with people around the world because they know it. And um, I also love it. Uh, so yeah, and then people that would come to the stage door that are from everywhere, <laughs> you know, like, wow, you came all the way here from, yeah, I don't know, Sweden, that's great. <laughs> like, just literally everywhere. It, and then it became normal, which is so truly abnormal, having done lots of other things since then. But it's it's not it's unusual to have people from all over the world all the time coming to the stage door and saying like I came here for this. That's incredible, and quite a responsibility as a cast. You know, You're like we got to deliver. We got to give them a great show. They just were on a twelve hour flight to get here. So, <laughs> but and it's also there are so many productions around the world now of Wicked. I mean, not so many. I wish there were more, so more people could get to it. But there are more. And what was your favorite moment in the show to perform? Uh, gosh, there were many. I really, I, I did love doing popular. It was sort of a love-hate relationship because I felt this pressure sometimes that it had to be like a certain way or it had to be, because Kristen Chenoweth, I mean, she is legendary and created, it's just who she is. Um, and what I love about the role of Glinda is that everybody that's, come in since Kristen Chenoweth has brought their own flavor of humor and so I tried to just think about that uh and but then when I did it made it so fun uh it really is such a great playful moment uh and it's the most I always say that um Wicked is one of my favorite shows that I've ever done because it was the most fun I've ever had on stage and specifically in popular where there's a little wiggle room 
to make it yours. And it sort of feels like what we were just talking about, that preview process where you could play and offer things up, um, where you could have this moment of improv uh, and see what happens, see what sticks. And I guess that's what I got to do every night in popular a little bit. You have to say the words on the page. There's a little room, like when she's doing the, the ball gown thing and toss toss so you said there's room for you to make it yours which is so freeing and fun that's maybe one of my favorite parts because I loved just the buoyant moment with Elphaba a lot of Elphaba's moments are so heavy so I loved seeing her have her toss toss moment and like just getting to connect with her in a silly fun positive way rather than the deep moments, which are also equally lovely because my other favorite part is for good. <laughs> so I would say popular and for good, but generally always for good was an anchor. It always felt like um, a hug. It felt like coming home. Um, and it's the standalone song that doesn't have to be sung in the show. It's, um, it's about acceptance, forgiveness, and a song that the world always needs and I don't know it just so it, it always hit my heart in a wonderful way and I was grateful I got to sing it and the alphabets that I worked with I just like I feel so lucky they're the best so to sing it with them amazing and so you've done the show with uh, many wonderful performers who have been alphabet would you say you're Glinda like changed or like had to be adjusted because obviously every performer is different. So was there a different connection with each one? Yes, I'm nodding my head. I don't know if, this is, if anybody would be able to hear that. Um, but I, uh, yes. And I, it's funny, I was just talking to my in-laws about this, about like, cause uh, my friend Caroline Bowman had FaceTimed me while I was away with family. And um, she's one of my alphabets. She was my first Broadway alphabet and she's the best. All of them are the best, but she was, so my, my, my mother-in-law was asking, does, did your show change with each alphabet? And I said, yeah, but not by trying. It's really, I mean, acting is listening and responding. And so I was trying to listen to what I was receiving and then respond in an honest way. It would be sometimes hard to get out of that habit when I was with a specific alphabet and we did this thing. Um, and then I was receiving something new from a new alphabet that was contracted. And I was just like, oh, don't, don't be a robot. Like what's the, what's the, what's the honest response here? Or don't think about it and just be. I think that it was so fun. Yeah, absolutely. It totally changed with each one. And I loved that it, because, I mean, they're all so different and what their story it, within Alphaba is different um, from each one. So I just, I, I, I loved it. And that's, that's the beauty of acting is like really being on your toes and seeing what you're given in that moment and respond openly and honestly. In 2019, moving on, you went to be in Carol King and that was, you played Cynthia. So what was mm -hmm. it like getting to, for the first time, playing a real person who's existed before? Yeah, that was a no pressure. I didn't even think of, well, I had played Laura Ingalls Wilder, but she's not around anymore. <laughs> so I did play her and there weren't any like interviews to watch of her because she's, she was older for many years ago um so with Cynthia while I could go and watch a YouTube video of her having an interview I mean she's still in LA she's living her best life fabulous in LA and she's this icon and I'm like do I copy it do I mimic you know like SNL just kidding <laughs> um but really I was like do I walk like her do I try to like make my hair I don't know uh, but really they didn't want you to do that. They wanted the costumes and the, the script and, you know, the wig to speak for itself. And then you just be you. There is a dryness about her, but it's written in the script, which is fun. Um, and she's funny. She's just like, no nonsense, funny. And it was really fun to get to 
play. Uh, and once I had that pressure off of, I don't need to try and be her or be like her. It was so much easier. I could just be me within her, um, sketch, I guess, <laughs> you know, um, but the only thing that I did kind of worry about is that, well, Carol King came to the show multiple times and she was so sweet and so kind. And I was like shaken because I was so nervous. She's just a legend, um, but she was just so lovely. And every time she came, I was like, is Cynthia Weil here too? Is she here? <laughs> so I'd get nervous because I want to make sure I'm doing, you know, making sure that she's proud of who she's seeing up there. I'm supposed to be a reflection of who she is. Um, so just imagine going to a show and watching somebody play you. Like <laughs> you want to make sure that 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 they're doing well, or I don't know. Um, so anyway, that was my only worry, but I never did get to meet her, which I'm sad about. I would have loved to have met her. I mean, there's still time. She's she's here. She's in LA. So. And so getting to do, you've done both sit down productions and touring productions of shows. When you're on tour, obviously every city brings in a new demographic of people. How do you keep the show sort of new and fresh for each new sort of audience? Um, I mean, we just have to do our job of, you know, continuing to tell the story. And yes, there are different responses and some people are way more um, boisterous in their response. And you can't help but listen to that. And the, the, the audience really is another character within the show. Uh, so y you can't deny when somebody like clapping and screaming and like really laughing hard and you have to pause a little bit so that people can hear the next part. So there is a bit of that. But I think it's another thing that I love uh, with you know, the same thing with um, different alphabets that I had the opportunity to work with. Also the different cities that I had the opportunity to play in. They heard a different part of the script than the previous city. And it, and it sort of makes you hear it differently. And so it just keeps you on your toes. It's all, all of these things keep us on our toes as actors and it makes it new and fresh every night and every audience is different even on Broadway it's different and then especially when you go from city to city um, certain things hit differently and it's it's just so neat it's so fun to to witness and to get to have that different scene partner the, the audience and my last question is a question that I like to ask all my guests and it's what piece of advice would you give to people who want to go into musical theater professionally? Be kind to yourself um, and to others always. Um, but you know this, well, yeah, be kind to yourself and to others. I think there's a, um, you will audition a lot and there will be rejection and that's normal but you have to continue to move forward through that and, um, try and remain positive and do kind things for yourself. Go take a voice lesson and, um, I don't know, sing for your parents and have them tell you how great you are. <laughs> I don't know. You know, just do things that are, are kind to you um, and also be kind to every single person. You never know who you will be working for or with one day. <laughs> 